Hi, my name is Mina Ricky, and I am Lydia Korshak, and this is the Code REI. Discover your perfect real estate investment match with the Code REI. Your matchmaker in the world of real estate. Let us find your investment soulmate and make your heart and wallet happy. Today, we're interviewing Sonia Moskoskaya. She is a highly effective public speaking coach who believes that the art of communication can elevate all areas of our lives. She has successfully assisted numerous clients in overcoming their fear of public speaking and becoming not only confident, but also memorable. Sonia is committed to assist everyone finding their voice and delivering an unforgettable message with excellence and elegance. Sonia's unique approach to public speaking coaching incorporates not only the intellectual and physical aspects of the craft, but also the emotional and spiritual. Sonia holds a master's degree in linguistics and intellectual communication and loves sharing her knowledge on the power of verbal and nonverbal expression. Welcome to the show. It's so great to have you. Thank you yes. so much for having me here. Welcome. Welcome, Sonia. We're so happy that you're here. I'm so excited to interview you. I think everybody needs to hear your story and everybody needs to hear everything about you because you're amazing. Before we get into the interview part, I just want to say that it's not enough to know something and to be a good person. You have to be able to communicate it efficiently to the other side. And this is where people like Sonia comes in to show us how to do it. And let's go and get into the interview. Yes, Sonia. Definitely communication is the big. So now we're getting into it. Biggest thing that I want to talk to you about, what inspired you to be a public speaking coach and take up this communication study and analyze it and actually teach people your hacks and your secrets? Mm, that is such a great question. And thank you so much, Lydia and Mina, for the opportunity to share my story and my secrets of communication. I have to say that it goes back to my childhood. I have always been really passionate about languages. And as a child, I was drawn to learning languages. My dad was a professor of English, so it was very natural for me to study languages. And when I was 22, I got my master's degree in linguistics and I moved from Russia to the States. And I'll tell you, in the beginning, it was really tough because there was language barrier. There were cultural differences and my English wasn't that great at that time. And if somebody had told me at that moment that I would be a public speaking coach and helping business owners, authors communicate better, I would have never believed them. <laughs> but this is, you know, this is just the joy of how sometimes our life story can be shaped if we really tap into our passion. And I was working for a company in Boston. I was a brand speaker. I didn't start as a brand speaker. I started in customer service and then worked my way up. And eventually I became the brand speaker for the company. So I traveled to different parts of the States, mostly in California, and I would give talks. And as I became better at it, the company asked me to mentor other speakers. And then I started mentoring people and coaching people outside of that company. And I found out that I enjoy helping somebody else overcome their fear and anxiety of public speaking, find their unique voice, and craft a memorable message even more than I enjoy being on the stage myself. Wow. It's like extensions. You can live through the progress of other folks. Yes. Well, you're not only a public speaker, but you're also a member of Forbes Council. What was your experience like there? Forbes Coaches Council, yes, it's a really great community. And I have to say that I'm incredibly honored to be a part of this community. It's been a very positive experience because I get to work with some of the most brilliant and dedicated coaches here in America and actually around the world. It's an international community. And funny thing that I got accepted into Forbes Coaches Council on my birthday. In July of last year, and it was the best birthday present that I could receive. This community allows me to put together content 
on my area of expertise and publish articles on Forbes, as well as lead events. I recently got promoted to a member leader for Forbes Coaches Council Public Speaking Group, and we just produced our first masterclass on how to become an effective speaker in 2023 and actually become profitable as a speaker. So it's been a fantastic experience. Congratulations. Thank you. So, so what are some of the key points to become a master speaker or just to become good enough of a speaker to retain an audience? Oh, you know, there are many, many aspects of public speaking that can shape the experience for the audience, right? And you probably would agree with me that sometimes we can hear a speaker who is incredibly polished, well-prepared, and you can tell that they understand body language or they had great training for their vocal variety and their speech might be really well-written. However, we don't always remember these speakers. They don't always touch our hearts. I always tell my clients that a good speaker will make you think and a great speaker will make you feel. But a transformational speaker, a phenomenal speaker is somebody who will change the course of your life. So I've thought about this question for a long time. What is it that can make somebody that type of speaker? Somebody who people will really remember and somebody who can influence others. And I've come to a conclusion that it's not only by polishing your craft and it's not all about being perfect, but it's about engaging the spiritual, emotional, intellectual, and physical aspects of public speaking, which led me to my method of the four pillars of communication. Okay, okay. Well, this is getting good. I want to hear that, please. I need, okay, I need to rewind to this video because I need to study. <laughs> okay, go ahead, please. Go on. <laughs> All right. So the four pillars of communication. When we listen to any ancient philosophies, when we read about ancient philosophies and any kind of teachings, they tell us that a human being is comprised of four different elements. And this is intellectual, physical, spiritual, and emotional, right? However, in my experience as a public speaking coach, I've noticed that most of the time when public speaking is taught, the focus is always on the intellectual aspect, which is the content of our speech. It's speech structure, what words people are using, what sources of information they use for research. Very intellectual, right? And then there is the physical aspect, which is body language, gestures, eye contact, smile, vocal variety, movement on the stage. And those two are really, really important. But if we cut ourselves off the spiritual and emotional parts of communication, we're taking away those two really important pillars. And actually, when I start working with my clients, it starts with the spiritual element. Because when we can align our communication with our higher calling, our gifts and talents that we're here to share with others, that's when it takes it to another level. And it actually also helps us overcome the fear and anxiety. When you lean into your calling, your why, your anxiety subsides. So having, what is it? Having the purpose. Mm -hmm. So it's not really about being remembered as a person. Oh, yes, Mina gave a great speech. Or she changed my life. No, it's about I was in this point and then my life shifted. And it doesn't even have to do because I heard somebody talk, but it has to do with there was something I heard mm -hmm. that just changed my mind. Absolutely. Or my life. I, I you're, you're so right about that. Even though, yes, we want to be perceived and in a certain way and we want to be remembered. But if we remove our ego, from the communication part and we focus on the giving part that's when you become truly a phenomenal speaker and it will help you calm your nerves because it's not about you wow i have experienced speakers on the stage they are motivational speakers that have rehearsed the same 
it's almost like a pitch. I used to be a pitchman, so mm-hmm. I know how to memorize a demonstration. And when do you say the inflection? When you go up high, when you get excited, when you get low, when you get quiet, <laughs> when you get really, really excited, when it's time to buy, okay, let's go, everybody, let's go. Jump, 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 right? So I understand that. And I have seen it also on the stage, motivational speakers, where they have said it a hundred or a thousand times and they just don't feel it anymore. Mm-hmm. And as an audience, I perceive that and it becomes very empty. Uh, How can you keep somebody motivated to continue to be able to give that message to the audience, Sonia? That is such a great question. I love this question, Nina. I think that any communication and any talk, even if it is a well-written and well-prepared talk, is always a dialogue. It's never a monologue and you want to customize, you want to personalize your talk to different audiences because no audience is ever the same. So there are a couple of things you can do as a speaker to keep yourself really connected to the audience. First of all, ahead of the event, you can find out from event organizers, who is my audience? Why are they here? What do they want to learn from me? And it will be different from each for each event. If the event organizer doesn't have those crystal clear answers, then you can ask to send out a survey. Can I please send out a survey with three, four questions to understand what are the core needs for my audience so I can really give them what they are looking for and not just that cookie cutter pitch that I deliver at every event. So that's one thing. Always try to personalize your talk to the needs of the audience. The second thing is get the audience engaged. I always tell my clients, my speakers, find opportunities to engage the audience as much as you can. You can ask them a question. You can ask them to do something. You can share with them a piece of music or a visual. Get their reaction and then respond to this because it's always a dialogue. And when you get that reaction from the audience and you can respond, it will never feel stale because every talk will be different. That is so true. Response is everything. In our world, we've been hearing this buzzword called storytelling. And you're a master in this. You have a course called Art of Storytelling. Can you tell us what is storytelling? And why, for the case, why is it important to storytell? Yes. I think that we are realizing as business owners and as the audience that those elevator pitches don't work as well as telling Mm -hmm. a story. I think we've all seen enough of PowerPoint presentations, Google Slides, charts. We've seen enough of data and there is an overload of this data. And if you Go on any social media. Everybody's trying to pitch something and convince us how great their product is. And I think we're just numb to this amount of information. Storytelling goes beyond the intellectual engagement. Storytelling can really touch our hearts. And if you know how to use different elements of storytelling, you can elicit different hormones in our body to be produced. And when those hormones are produced, then we feel an emotion. And an emotional response is much more powerful than an intellectual response. So I think we're starting to realize that storytelling is a much more powerful tool than presenting data or charts or PowerPoint slides. And that's why everybody is buzzing about storytelling. Yeah, if I wanted to know the numbers, I just Google them. (laughs) Right. And actually, there is a way to present the numbers with storytelling. Ah, now you're getting into the weeds. I like that. Yeah, now you're getting into our world. So can anybody use a story in numbers? Numbers are boring, right? Can you make a story for numbers for all our listeners who are business owners, who are in multifamily space? Can they use whatever you teach? I I guess the question is, Can you add feelings to numbers? (laughs) Yes. I always try to find a story behind the numbers. And I'll give you an example. 
I raise a lot of money and awareness to fight human trafficking. It's one of my causes. I always donate money from the profits of my business to fight human trafficking. And this is a cause that is really close to my heart. And a lot of people don't know how many children, women, and men around the world are trapped in human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And the latest statistic tells us that it's close to 26 million people. Well, it sounds like a lot, right? It sounds like a lot, but if I can put that number into a perspective, then it will be even more impactful. For example, if I say, did you know that 26 million people around the world are trapped in human trafficking? This is an equivalent of the population of Australia. Wow. So imagine if we were told that the whole country of Australia is being held hostage, is in poor conditions, being abused physically and emotionally, what would the world do? I'm sure that there would be a complete outrage in the world and we would all together do something to free the people of Australia. But because these 26 million people are spread out around the world and hidden, there is no outrage and there is no united action to free these people, right? So that's how we put a story behind the numbers. When you quote a number, for many people, it's just a number. But if you put it in perspective and you give a comparison or an analogy, then it becomes that much stronger. Mina, I had an interesting experience the other day. I was showing properties to a family with two kids and we had 10 to see. After viewing about half, the family was getting pretty hungry and they really just wanted to continue the other day. So what did you do? I went to my car and pulled out a bag of delicious Ricky Jerky. They loved it so much they were able to continue our day without any issues. All their ingredients are 100% natural, plus every strip is seasoned, marinated, and smoked by hand to give you the best experience and slap you back into the gear. But I need to buy some more. Oh, just head over to rickysjerky.com and use the discount code decode REI for 15% off your first order. So whether you're a busy real estate agent or just looking for mouth-watering snack on the go, Ricky Jerky, Jerky got, got you covered. I have other questions about your coaching, but before that, I want to know why is it so close to your heart and why some of us ignore that? I think that's a big statement, 26 million. And then when you put it in the size of Australia, I mean, put it in the size of Texas, then we'll get really worried about it. <laughs> yes. True. Why am I so passionate about this? Because I was moved by a story. I was actually in a Toastmasters at a Toastmasters event many years ago, and a fellow speaker who works for a fantastic company called International Justice Mission. It's actually an organization, International Justice Mission. She stood up and she shared a story of a little boy who was a victim of labor trafficking, modern day slavery in Africa. And I imagine how would I feel as a mother if this was my child? And I'm a mother of twin boys. And it impacted me so deeply. That story of that little boy impacted me so deeply, more than any statistics that I could have read on human trafficking, that I was able to put myself in the shoes of the child and in the shoes of the mother. And I thought, I have to do something about that. So since I heard that story, I've been committed to raising awareness and funds for this cause to free the many people of human trafficking. And the majority of them are children and women. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. It's already touched me, you know. Wow. Yeah. So back to your coaching. Can you share success stories of clients that you took a client besides me? Um, I'm your active client. I'm a work in progress that from, you know, from being this fearful person to phenomenal speaker. Yes, I'll be happy to share a story with you. I've been privileged to work with a lot of clients. And this one particularly stands out because when she came to me, she had a paralyzing a paralyzing fear of public speaking and an extreme anxiety. And she is a phenomenal expert in her field. She comes from the travel industry. 
She's incredibly experienced. It's a joy to listen to her. However, whenever she was put in public speaking settings, she would be so paralyzed by fear that she couldn't share any of her knowledge and any of her beautiful stories, advice, or expertise. So when her and I started working together, we went through a deeply emotional process of peeling off the layers gently and uncovering what was the root of that fear. And when somebody comes to me with this extreme fear and anxiety, I always start working from inwards first, identifying the root of that fear. And through this process, we found out that she actually had trauma and abuse, mm -hmm. prolonged trauma and abuse. And any time when she was exposed, she was vulnerable in front of other people. Her natural body rea reaction was to completely close off. Mm -hmm. So until we found out what it is, mm -hmm. we couldn't really work through that. So the number one step was to identify the root of the fear, then become really familiar with that fear, become curious about it and friendly with that fear. And then little by little, she learned how to use that pain and transform it into powerful fuel that allows her now to be a really strong speaker. And she is now able to talk about that traumatic experience and help others heal. Well, that's very touching. That's like another great story. <laughs> yeah. Really compels the, the point. I want to slow down a little bit in the interview and talk to you about your mindset progress you said you came to the states when you were 22 yes i came to the states when i was almost 22 lydia was here a little younger so she was able to absorb it but as a young adult it took me a couple of years to really understand what was this all about yes <laughs> <laughs> and i did you know so there is a huge lack of understanding the culture and the language and being able to communicate. So we naturally start working on it, mm -hmm. but then you just kept going. What was your mindset or did you just find a lot of joy in it? Or how were you called to just continue on this journey? To continue on this journey, I think what helps me is curiosity. Because yes, there is a lot of, there are a lot of cultural differences for many of us who come to the States from another country. And when you come here in your twenties, you're already a formed adult. And my degree actually that I got was in linguistics and multicultural communications. So I was naturally curious as to not only the traditions and the norms of behavior, but why is it a tradition? Why is it a different cultural response? to the same scenario than what we experienced in my country. So this curiosity to this day allows me to adapt better and speak in the language of people who are around me. And when I say speak in the language of people who are around me, I don't just mean the English language. What I mean by that is speaking into somebody's listening, okay? Because some people around us are more driven by data, some people are more driven by emotions. And as a society, this is a different society than where I came from. So I think knowing the language is just one part of it, but being able to understand the why behind some behavioral traditions and societal norms is what really helps you adapt and connect to a different culture. Well, wow. you, you may go back to asking about the coaching, but just one more no, question, no, Lily. Go ahead. <laughs> I love your questions. Throughout history, we've seen that the leaders, the real historic figures, having leaders that are able to speak publicly. That's mm -hmm. how important this is. Yes. And I've been also on that journey and uh, for obvious reasons. And we are exposing ourselves, you know, with accent and all, but it's because we do have a call for sharing, hey, there is other paths to living. There's other paths to making money. It's not like you have to work 
hourly for every dollar you get. There is other ways. Anyways, that's our passion. That's our motivation. Can you talk about some of those historic figures that you have seen that were very strong or any story about those historic figures that has just changed your, your mind or your, yeah, your, your view on, on storytelling or on public speaking? Oh, so those those speakers who impacted me personally? Yes. Well, I never witness in person Dr. Martin Luther King, but mm -hmm. he is my favorite speaker. And anytime I listen to recordings of his speech, every time it transforms a different part of me. Now, this is somebody who took his passion, who took his vision and connected it with communication in such a powerful way that even to this day, we are impacted by the echo of his speaking. And this is a perfect example of somebody who is spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, and physically aligned. He had all the tools for public speaking success. He had a beautiful voice. He had a very strong physical presence. Intellectually, of course, he was an incredibly brilliant person. And then add to that his passion for vision for this country and the emotion and the spiritual aspect. And that's how you get a brilliant speaker who is transformational. Do you think he practiced a lot? I do believe he practiced. <laughs> I, think, I think he took his crap seriously. Totally agree with you. Practice makes everything perfect. Yes. So talking about the practice, what tools you know, or hacks can you share something with a listener? I know you have a website and you're putting out a lot of content and I believe Forbes had there is an article about it, but can you share something with our listeners, a little hack they can use to improve their speaking besides taking your course? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have a lot of tools and I'm going to share just a couple right now. First of all, before you start working on your speech, whether it is a TV interview, whether you're telling a story or sharing some important piece of information, Sit down and think about what is my intention? Is my intention to educate, to entertain, to inspire? So identify that overall intention. It will make your work so much easier. It will save you a lot of time and it will make your talk really powerful. So be really crystal clear on why you are speaking, what is the intention and what is your ideal outcome when you deliver that talk? Another thing that I will mention, I notice speakers generally tend to rush. And a lot of it is because they feel anxious, they feel nervous. And this is very common for somebody who's just starting out to rush through their talk. So remind yourself to slow down, use your breath work, use good diaphragm breathing and embrace pauses. If you can do those things, you will already sound so much more confident, relaxed, and impactful that you won't have to do a lot of work around other aspects of your speech. I feel more relaxed already. <laughs> it's true, though. I do rush through my statement or my questions because I don't want to take the space. And that comes from an emotional standpoint. And I'm just telling everybody about it. I asked up, but I am looking forward to working with you. Lydia was kind to get me into your coaching program, and I'm looking forward to it. I think everybody needs to understand the basics of communication, either by coming to Sonia or finding somebody else, but I think it's imperative. Sonia, would you like to just go ahead and tell us where can people find you? Oh, yes, absolutely. I am, first of all, on Instagram, and I do share a lot of tips on public speaking on Instagram that you can get for free. So you can find me at Sonia M. Power on Instagram. And then my website is soniampower.com. And if you sign up for email updates, you will receive a communication tip every week. So follow me on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook under Sonia Maslovskaya, founder of Sonia Empower. 
I'd love to share the tips that will support you. That's great. Well, thank you, Sonia, for coming here, sharing, you know, a little bit of secrets, how to communicate properly, because communication is the key in everything in life. And we will probably do a follow-up, another interview after you coach us to perfection. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, she has, I don't know when this is going to come out in April, she has a storytelling course. Please sign up. And it's very powerful. Yes, the storytelling course is coming out on April 23rd. And I'm sure that I will do another one. And I would love to be back on your podcast. I love what you do. Thank you. Thank you again. We love you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. And if we don't get any better, thank you know who's to blame for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thank sure that will not be the case. <laughs> no. Thank you, Savannah. Yeah, I just wanted to encourage you to work a little harder. On this. <laughs> oh, she's a professionalist. <laughs> yes, thank you again. Thank, thank you. you so much, everybody. Yes. God bless you. Bye. Bye.